Hold on, hold on. Time out, time out, time out. Flag on the play. I know y'all saw Jeezy, a.k.a. Jizzo, sitting across from fine ass Nia Long, dirty macking to the fullest, right? I mean, that was a master class of dirty macking. It was exemplary, all right? And if y'all don't know what dirty macking is, that's throwing salt on another man in another way, you know, concerning his behavior, etc., in order to prop yourself up, right? So if you don't know, Ime Udoka, uh, Nia Long's partner for many, many years, they share, they share a child together. It came out that the former Boston Celtics coach, head coach, was cheating on Nia Long with somebody within the organization, right? And... Here come Jeezy, right? Jeezy and her are, they're having an interview. Jeezy has recently filed from divor for divorce from his wife, Jeannie Mai, and they're discussing, you know, the time in his life now. I haven't watched the full interview, but they're discussing, you know, um, moving on from relationships, blossoming uh, and going forward, et cetera, right? And so, uh, Nia Long brings up men cheating, and here come Jeezy. Just a snowman say, what's snowman say? Real N-words don't cheat. Real N words don't cheat. And Nia Long say, You don't think so? You don't think so? And Jeezy say, Hell no. <laughs> right? <laughs> Jeezy, hell no. Hell no. Hell no. No, man. He looked, at, he looked at Nia like, Are you serious? <gasps> no. N word, real N words don't cheat. And Jeezy say, They do not. They do not. It's something in us <laughs> that makes us want to do right across the board. It's something in us. That makes us want to do right across the board. Real N-words don't cheat. So he's saying Ime Udoka was not a real N-word. Boy, I bet you Ime Udoka throwing out all his snowman CDs. Right? I bet you he had a snowman t-shirt back in the day. He throwing out the cane band, the snowman mixtape. He throwing out Thug Motivation 101. He deleting all Jeezy from his playlist. Because you see, Jeezy is across from his, you know, the, uh, the mother of his child, his form of love. Licking his chops. And looking in Nia Long's eyes, and I don't know, Nia Long might become smitten with the brother. I don't know, right? But I was like, damn, man. <laughs> that was dirty back into the bullet. Real N words don't cheat. Hell no. Hell no. They do not. <laughs> Nia, Nia. <laughs> the way Jeezy say, hell no. When Nia Long say, you don't think so? <laughs> Jeezy, hell no. <laughs> hell no. Hey, but no, though, man. Um, it, it, and listen. People have been dirty macking in music for the longest of time. Drake is a supreme master of dirty macking. I'm just saying you can do better, right? F that N word that you love so bad. All of that, right? And you remember LL, LL Cool J. You know, he was one of the premier dirty mackers. He made it popular in rap. What do you say on Hey Lover? He was talking, uh, talking about the girl's boyfriend, plus he drank too much and smoked too many blunts, and I've been working out all day thinking about you. I say, <laughs> I say, no, nah, LL, you out here telling that girl, you, she don't need to be with him. You hear me? She don't need, he is not fit. He is not physically fit to handle you. I'm cut up like a, a bag of dope, and your man just drink and smoke blunts all day. I don't do none of that. You need to get with a man who is on his men's health tip, right? <laughs> So that was Jeezy on. No, man. He say, Ime Udoka ain't no real N-word. He cheated on you, Nia Long. God damn. And he looking at her. You remember when, uh, Big Mama's house when Martin was playing um, Had It Made Pierce, a.k.a. Big Mama. He was dressed up in a costume and he was, uh, he was dressed up in a costume and he was um, talking to Nia Long, acting like he was really her grandmother. And he say, Big Mama, never forget that ass. Ma, asthma. <laughs> Sherry, you what he told her, Sherry used to be wheezing. <gasps> I'd be like, Sherry, what's going on with you? She big mama, I don't remember that, you know? Jeezy say, listen, man, I know you <laughs> Ime Udoka would never forget that ass. I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to see what it looked like for real in real life. And then I then I find out Jeezy got a song called Nothing to Prove on a tape, or was it an album or a tape that just dropped, right? And he got a song say, Ever see, ever see me alone? I'm getting at her. So how coincident? How like uh? How coincidental is it? How much of a coincidence is it that now Nia Long is sitting across from him, right? And I'm like, yo, and you know what, man? Somebody made a point and said, you know, Jeezy was seeming to be vibing with her or relating to her in the aspect of cheating in so many words. And they like, did Jeannie mind cheat on a snowman? You hear me? Did she cheat on a snowman? I don't know. But I remember her saying that, you know, for her, when she had a white husband, she said, you know, for me, it's dark meat on the side 
and she like white white keeps her uh, lean or something like that meaning white guys keep her lean the, the dark meat on the side for her that's a side dish the white man is the is the uh the main dish is the is the, is the uh what's the word i'm looking for um it is the entree etc right and is entree yeah entree okay and i'm like man did she cheat on cheesy i don't know and you know there's a lot of men out here to get cheated on, but they will never tell out of the fear of embarrassment or being looked at funny style or being looked at like, oh, you know, men like to call you a simp or whatever. I don't know. Who knows what happened? Honestly, I really don't think it was cheating. I think those cultural differences uh, butted their ugly heads. Like I said, Jeezy is a man from Georgia, from the deep south. Okay. Black man from the hoods of Georgia. She is an Asian woman. I don't even know where Jenny Mai is from. They don't have much in common as far as their background, their back life, their background life, right? You know, they don't have much in common, you know, in their upbringing, upbringing, etc. I think what happened was, like I said in the previous video, they were attracted to each other. They were smitten with one another. They were a novelty to each other. In particular, Jeannie Mai found her a nice little black dude that was a rapper that she thought was attractive. I remember he came on the reel. They were all commenting about, about how he smelled good. And Jeannie Mai was acting like she had a crush on him, etc. And I think it went from there. And they were all into each other. They had a child and all of that, right? Jeezy saw him a woman who was, you know, a lot of brothers had a fantasy about that exotic woman. And he saw something that was different. You know, uh, something that was not like where he usually dates, maybe. Um, not like as a girl that's not like where he comes from. But Jeezy has had access to all these different type of women for years, being a mainstream rapper. But I think it was a different look. This is a woman who was on TV. Um, a woman that's in the limelight. And, you know, he was attracted to her. But I think after, you know, the honeymoon phase dies down and after all of that, we just love how each other look. We, you know, you so fine, you so sexy, all of that. After that died down, get to the nitty gritty of the relationship, right? And Asian cultures and black culture is different. You know, um, I told y'all my boy Melvin, man, he's uh, he, he's uh, with a uh, Polynesian woman. She's, she's Hawaiian and her mother is a uh, uh, Filipino. And he's had interactions with Filipino women in in Hawaii, not like uh, even just in his regular uh, interactions at work, uh, regular interactions, you know, um, in his social life or whatever. Just around town, he see you know you you see different uh, Asian women in Hawaii, and he says a lot of those women run their household, right? A lot of them are feisty. They have a lot of like you know they got a lot of feistiness to them and the husband is just okay with it he lets the woman you know do her thing and she pretty much is the head of the household and a lot of like the demeanor she carries the demeanor of the household the man is financially doing his thing or whatever but the man is just chill and relaxed and mild-mannered and the woman is feisty and all of that and i'm wondering if jeezy saw that feistiness and saw because she spoke about how she can have a temper at times and jeezy i believe had to tell her about it Right. And I think that may have reared his ugly head. And he's all hell. No, you ain't running me. Jeezy say, oh, no, you ain't running me. You ain't talking crazy up in here. You ain't snapping at me. That shit ain't going to fly. And maybe they could have been a deal breaker. Also, I know that um a lot of Asian families, they like to, you know, the parents would move with you when you have a child. They want to be there and live in a house with you. A lot of times they want you to live with them, etc. Right. And in black culture. No, y'all know how a lot of us grow up. As soon as we we can, a lot of us, we going to leave Mama Ness. Now, in this economy, shit, I wish I never left my Mama Ness because, God damn, I don't want to play the, I don't want to pay all these bills by my lonesome by myself, right? But, you know, most of, most of the time when you get a chance, a lot of black folks, they leave for their freedom and independence. And they don't really seek coming back home unless it's for financial uh, benefits, etc., you know, and so Jeezy probably was, you know, they had the baby. The mama want to come in and move in. She may have wanted to move in her brother or whatever, her cousin now. You know, and, and Jeezy probably was like, yo, I'm not with that. I thought it was just going to be us in the house. We can go see your family. We can go see your uh your, your, your friends, et cetera, with the baby. But I don't know if we need to have all this intrusion into space, et cetera. And I think it was something that was a little, I think it was something, it was tough. You know, but... I would say this in an interview from what I saw, he didn't badmouth her. 
He didn't trash her, none of that. And that's what a grown man is, is supposed to do. You don't badmouth the woman that you were married to. You married her for a reason. You were into her at some point. You were smitten with her, um, enamored with her, whatever you want to say. It didn't go it didn't go right. It didn't go well. And, you know, now y'all going your separate ways. But y'all have a beautiful baby girl together. Y'all got to co-parent this baby. Y'all got to be amicable with each other. And so it's good to see that he wasn't trashing her, right? But yeah, man, I think Jeezy is, and he really didn't, from what I see, he didn't really address it and go into specifics or anything. He spoke about going to counseling, trying to make it work, and hey, it didn't work. And sometimes relationships don't work and they fail, unfortunately. But uh, I was just interested. I'm looking like, man, Jeezy up in this woman's face, some of my real N-words don't cheat. Jeezy, you look like you've been cheating all your life, brother. It looked like you've been out here doing your thing all your life. Look like you cheated before you came into the goddamn interview, <laughs> even though you're separated or whatever, right? I'm being silly, of course. I'm being silly. Jeezy has showed a lot of growth over the years, growth that I've never imagined him having from when he was one of my favorite rappers when Thug Motivation 101 came out. I walked to the dang on Target to go get Thug Motivation, uh, I mean, excuse me, the inspiration. Some people call it TM, Thug Motivation 102, but it's called the inspiration. I remember when it came out December 20. December 2006, I walked to Target. I used to live by Target, right by Target on 87th Street. 87, right off Cottage Grove, in all my Chicago people. I walked to Target. The Target not even there no more. They took all the Targets out the black neighborhoods. I don't know why. Well, I don't know what Target got against black folks. Who knows? But anyway, um, I walked to the Target to get that album because Jeezy was my dude. And now to see him, he used to be rapping. You know, of course, he was in the interviews. He wasn't super grown and mature. He was still like he was fresh out the trap, Jeezy. So to see a man get married, squash his beef with Gucci Mane, was something I never thought would ever happen for real, and they would share the stage and do so icy and all of that, even stay a grown man while uh, Gucci was hurling insults at Jeezy, dissing Jeezy, uh, dead homie or whatever, and Jeezy never lost his composure, stayed grown, and did the show for the fans and, and rocked it out, man. So he's shown a lot of growth and maturity over these years, something that I can salute and respect. He on his grown man tip. And who knows, man, maybe he can get Nia along. It's a fantasy he had, and that brother might be able to score big because they might have hit, hit it off and had some chemistry. But anyway, that's a great uh, interview. The, the interview is a great look for Nia along. Shout out to her. Shout out to Jeezy for coming in on the platform and doing the interview. All great looks around, man. Machiavelli Mills TV, I'm out. Peace.